Welcome once again to Commander by Danan. Normally on this channel, we have videos going over specific deck lists, with most of our videos being Patreon requests. But since today is my birthday, I wanted to do a video to help new people get into Commander. Specifically, how to build your first Commander deck. If you're enjoying my content, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support, and if you like the deck list, consider sharing this video as well. Now, I'm going to make some assumptions and base the video on them. First of all, you know how to play Magic. You know how the stack works, you know how phases work, and the rules for when you cast certain types of cards. I'm not worried if you don't know about holding priority. So long as you're not a savage who puts their lands in front of their creatures, we can be friends. I'm also going to assume that you own a couple of pre-constructed commander decks. Maybe you've modified them a bit adding a few extra spells to help your deck run better. As I'm sure you've noticed, most pre-con commander decks come close, but don't really follow a handy-dandy checklist like this one. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp, 10 pieces of card advantage, 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, and 1 sudden I win card. But before we get to the heart of the video, a quick word from our sponsor, Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard is made famous by their boulders, solid, reliable, and affordable deck boxes. Boulders are now available in solid colors, like this beautiful petrol one seen here. Find out if your local game store carries the new Ultimate Guard solid color boulders, or click on the link down below to order yourself one from Amazon. One last announcement before we get into our videos. I've been invited to attend MagicCon Chicago, Unfortunately, I'm very short on funds and probably won't be able to make it. If you'd like to help me and my kid, the one who convinced me to get back into magic, travel to the Windy City in order to play this February, consider joining my Patreon. Even if it's just for a month of support, it would mean a lot. Maybe you're new to Commander and coming from Standard or Arena. Maybe Commander was your introduction to magic. Or maybe you discovered a love of the game from the Universes Beyond products like Doctor Who, Lord of the Rings, or Warhammer 40k. Whatever your introduction, welcome. We're happy you're here. Chances are, now that you're wanting to build your own deck, you have one of two starting points. Either you have a commander in mind, and you're picking out a theme, or you have a theme in mind and need to find a commander. Either way, your best resource is edhrec.com. At the top of the homepage, you can click Themes. Some popular suggestions are listed there, but you can choose to view decks by creature type or archetype. Let's say you're like cute stuff and obsessed with dragons, to the point that your nickname and sometime work title is The Dragon Lady. Cute stuff currently has seven dragon decks in paper and is working on more as we speak. Well, the first thing you'll need to do is pick colors. As you can see from the dragon page, there are a lot of suggested commanders. Remember, EDHREC scours the internet and gives suggestions for cards based on the number of times it finds a specific card in a deck list. There are many websites you can go to in order to post your deck list. Moxfield, MTG Goldfish, and Tapped Out are some of my favorites. I use MTG Goldfish for this channel because I'm friends with Saffron Olive and I like how the deck looks when I do a video scroll. See? Nice and pretty. Okay, back to our hypothetical dragon deck. Since we know what kind of deck we're wanting to build, next up we'll want to choose our color identity. There are as many red dragons in Magic as there are dragons that do not have red in their color identity. Let me repeat that. According to Scryfall, another great resource we'll be diving into, there are 140 mono red dragons in Magic. 138 of them have a mono red color identity. Now, if we look at dragons that have no red in their color identity, there are only 122. So if you're building a dragon deck and this is the first commander deck you've ever built, you probably want red in your color identity, but it's not necessary. Dragons do come in a wide variety of colors. Now, if we're building an angel deck, you almost need to include white. If we compare using the same metrics as dragons, there are 176 angels with a mono-white color identity, but only 16 out of all the rest of the colors. Next up, since this is your first ever commander deck, 
I would limit your colors to three or fewer. The more colors your deck has, the more complicated the deck can be. Also, your mana base becomes more expensive. Potentially. There is a reason fetches and shocks are so expensive. They're good. They're mostly used in modern, but commander players enjoy using them as well. But running 10 shocks and 10 fetches will run you over $300. And that's after shocks just got a reprint in Ravnica Remastered. Now, if you're coming from modern or have a bunch of shocks and fetches lying around, that makes things easier. But piloting a four or five color commander deck is very different than anything else in the game. So I do not recommend it to new players. So we know we want a deck with red in it because this will make sure we have lots of dragons to choose from. We also know we want a deck with between one and three colors. So let's start narrowing the field. For this, we're gonna to turn to Scryfall. Once you're there, click on Advanced Search and under Text, we're gonna put Dragon. Under Type, we're gonna put Legendary. Finally, we're gonna pick some colors. Go ahead and choose which ones you want. I'm gonna go with Mono Red for this experiment. As you see, there are some cards that cannot be our commander. Sark and Fireblood, for instance. There is also legendary equipment. But we've also got quite a few non-dragons that could work as a dragon commander. As well as cards that allow us to run two color decks, like Ganex or Dragon Cultist. I wanted to show you this method because sometimes there are cards like Magda, Brazen Outlaw, who aren't dragons, but who work well with dragons and make good commanders for dragon decks. But I keep coming back to Lathless Dragon Queen. She's a dragon who makes other dragons whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control and makes all of our dragons bigger. So let's go with her. Now that we have our theme and our commander picked out, the next thing we need to decide is our budget. If you don't have a budget, cards like Mana Crypt and Dockset Extortionist are on the table. But if you want to stay under $100, you'll need to be very careful adding more than one card worth $10. But where do we go next? That is up to you, dear viewer. Do you want to start with lands and ramp? Do you want to pick out dragons? What about interaction and board wipes? What I like to do is find cards that fit our deck's theme, but fit into different categories. A card like Dragon's Horde is just a mana rock in any deck but a dragon deck. But in this deck, it becomes card advantage as well. Sark and Dragon Soul is a one damage board wipe that can win us the game out of nowhere, but would we rather have him or Chandra Torch of Defiance? And can we make room in the budget for Terror of the Peaks? Of course, this isn't just a mono red dragon deck, this is a Lathless deck. She's got an Enter the Battlefield trigger so we'll want to at least look at Panharmonicon. Helm of the Host is also a fun inclusion. And since most dragons have flying, we can run board wipes like Earthquake, or Magma Quake, or Fault Line, each of which can act as a one-sided board wipe, depending on what our opponents are playing. So, to find some ideas for your deck, you can use Scryfall to search for dragons, or cards that mention dragons. Now, I like to use Google Sheets to build my commander decks. I know that's boring to some people, but this way I can keep cards separate by function and keep an eye on things to make sure my deck follows my checklist. Once you have a good selection of cards, count them out, either by actually counting one by one or put your list into an online database like MTG Goldfish or Moxfield. When I first started playing commander, I had trouble coming up with 100 cards. Now I have the opposite problem. I usually need to cut about 20 cards after my initial run through. But here's the thing. All of the 20 cards I wind up cutting could go into the deck, and they might be good in your deck. They might work very well in your meta, or be more your style of play. No YouTuber, no matter how big, can tell you what cards you should or shouldn't put in your deck. And that's what matters. Commander is a reflection of the kind of magic player you want to be. So don't delete that list of 20 cards you were hesitant to put in your deck. Set it aside and make adjustments. Because no commander deck is ever really done. After all, Watsy can't stop printing cards. What method do you have for building commander decks? What was the first commander deck you ever built? Leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. 
If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, she can be reached at cutestuff.edits at gmail.com. Link is down below. If you're looking for ways to support the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Danan. For only $25, you too can have a Commander video built at your request. I also want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Waffles, Jariah, Danny, Muffins, Marcus, Squishy, Brat, Roxy, Josh, Sean, Pob Zombie, Mark, Borgie, Naswin, Pedro, Tom, Midge, Lucius, Detroff, Rally, Frank, Alex, and Jenny. You guys are awesome. I post new Commander Deck videos every weekday, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Damon.